Hi and welcome back to Programming with R and MATLAB. My name is Ian and I'm Finance Teaching Assistant at Stockholm Business School. Today we're continuing with coding in MATLAB and we're going to calculate trainer ratio sorting. I have to warn you that this is going to be quite extensive video. Uh, so please pay attention uh, to it very carefully. We're going to speak about a lot of things today and some of them are quite tricky. So let's Let's start. We're going to take a look at the fourth logical block where we need to select top 10 uh, stocks which have the highest trainer measure. But before this, we need to calculate this trainer measure. Uh, we need to sort the stocks and also we need to apply it for the each period of time. Uh, from our basics videos, here it is, uh, the logical block. So what we're going to do for each stock in the list, we need to run regression, then we need to select beta, and then we're going to click the trainer measure, and then we're going to save the ratio into the table. And of course, we're including this into the load stock function. So let's go in here. This is our load stock function. So in get to tr, where we're going to store our trainer ratios, we're going to write get tr set it here so that we do not forget that we that there is something missing then going here tr is equal get tr so we need prices for this our stock prices to calculate the expected return of the expected return then we need also the market values or the prices of the market index to calculate the expected return of the market so and again the risk free rate and we also would like to make it time varying so we need to have a total number of times so we need prices we need index prices let's say the risk free rate then number of time and, and good so first of all we would like to calculate calculate excess return returns so we're going to calculate it at once so excess return stock is going to be equal log returns so we take a natural logarithm in the similar manner as we did with the uh, uh, sharp ratio so we take the prices to to end, and then calculate uh, oh, divide it on prices one ten minus one, and then we'd like to subtract risk free rate. Then we take the same thing on the index, and we're going to have log return index prices. To, to end index prices from one to n minus one minus risk free rate. So now we have calculated the excess returns. We also need to say to declare a, to create an empty vector or the vector of zeros. Create um, vector of zeros which we'll call tr <laughs> it's going to be equal to zeros and we want, would like to have it for each time of period so we have number of time rows and just one column and then for time equal from 1 to uh, num time we would like to run regression Okay, before starting this, I would like to make a small uh, warning concerning uh, also the previous video on sharp ratio. Uh, I forgot to add plus one here, and we're also going to do the same thing with trainer measure. Why? Well, if you take a look at our example, so uh, let's take a look here, it is our stock data these are the prices when you calculate the log returns you get rid of this observation number one 
and I'm going uh, he, like here as well as will be here I'm you I'm referring to log returns starting from the first element in fact this first element in the log returns it refers to the time period number two so this is why we need to add one here to make it coherent so we're getting back to our example so we now need to write a regression and we need to calculate beta for this we're going to use the built-in function which is called the regress where you need to first write your y's uh, and it's going to be access access return on stock which is this one and we're going to regress it on uh, our access return and index I would like to re remind you that we agreed to set alpha to be equal to zero so that this regress function it will only return uh, beta if you write it like this uh, pretty much what a regress does it just returns the coefficients uh, when you do regressions oh. so if you want to you wanted to uh, return alpha as well you need to, to make a small adjustments you need to add brackets first of all then you need to write once and once is the same thing as zeros but instead of creating a vector each element of which is zero once creates a vector where each element is one and then you would like to write a size uh, access return on stock one one so what I did right now is that it will create a vector where each element is one which will have a uh, number of rows equal to the number of rows here and it will have only one column and then e e and then if you run this beta would be a vector which will have two values first would be alpha and second one would be beta but we are setting alpha to be equal to zero so we just can delete it if you in, in your code you can set it to be not equal to zero for example um, right now we all and now we're going to calculate calculate um, trainer measure but before this I need also to say one thing again uh, you need to, this regression it will run r the regression on the full sample and uh, I would like it to be time varying betas so in this case it would be just running it again and again and the sample will not change because it will run from one from the first element to the last element so let's specify that we want actually to access the element and use info uh, that we would like to use the information which was only available at the time period time here and now time plus one equal uh, excess return of the stock divided by beta and done so we're done with uh, this function so after running this function it will create a vector full with time varying t uh, trainer ratios trainer ratios for a specific stock so that now we just need to specify here which stock we would like it to operate with and because our ID is changing for all stocks we will, we will get the trainer ratios for all the stocks and index prices index is stored in number one if we take a look here number one is our index so we can refer it straight away 
I specify it this way. Good, then race free rate and number of time. Does it coincide? Yeah, risk free rate and number of time. Good. So now we have calculated the train ratio. What we need to do right now, we need to sort stocks and uh, include them to our portfolio. From uh, our basics example, uh, we I took this uh, schematic tables, how it will work. We're going to use the trainer measures over here. We will run the special function which will sort everything and will create a matrix like this. Then we would like uh, so that former IDs they kind of a link to the previous matrix and then we would like to select the top 10 and then we will write this former ID in our final portfolio over here so let's do it we are going to our main window and before we're going to start we would like to create a kind of this type of table we have already created it but we don't want to to operate with the whole database at once we would just need these trainer measures and we would like actually to have only trainer measures with for stocks which have the bind signal for all others we're not we actually don't care about them so what we're going to do here we're going to instead of applying one or zero where one we, it means we're investing and zero it means we're not investing we're going to do a little bit different we're going to assign a trainer ratio uh, or trainer measure instead of one mm, trainer ratio for time and if oh excuse me data stock data and if we are not investing we would assign a special value minus infinity so why we're doing this because we're going to sort all the stocks in descending order and sometimes it may happen that the stocks which have a buy signal will have a negative trainer measure but according to our strategy it, it doesn't actually matter if it is positive or negative number what matters that the stock has a buying signals and we would like to select among these stocks which have a buying signal so those which have the highest trainer measure this is why if we would keep this uh, thing equal to zero it will also filter uh, other stocks which uh, it may uh, it may actually include the stocks which do not have a buying signal at all but has but just happened to have high trainer measure so after we, d we have done this we would like to also create a pot special variable which will which we'll call portfolio uh, final portfolio final portfolio this final portfolio is going to be this matrix over here so our portfolio is equal to zeros and yeah and here we use zeros because if this for example ID is equal to zero then it means we're not investing in this stock and we would like to have it for each time period and we can invest only in maximum 10 stocks so it will have only 10 columns and the number of time uh, rows okay so now we need to sort the whole trainer measures which are stored in our temport uh, variable so for this we write this thing sort temport and then you descend <laughs> okay so what have I done here is that uh, there is a built-in function which does all the sorting and uh, by default it's uh, sorting in ascending order so from the lowest down to the highest values we don't want this we want it from the highest to lowest. For this, we are writing in descent here. 
then what it does, it, cr uh, it creates two vectors, vector b and ind, and in vector b uh, it writes the trainer measures which are written in, the, in here, so the sorted trainer measures. In ind it writes a former IDs which are sorted in the similar way, so that you, then you can link it to the main database. And uh, because there may be a possibility that sometimes you will have only two stocks or three stocks or pretty much stocks less than 10 to invest in, uh, then you would like to kind of understand when you have this situation. And in our framework it's easy because the stocks which do not have a buy signal and do not satisfy a moving average and sharp ratio filter it they will have minus infinity as their trainer measure. So what we're going to do, we're going to say if, oh, no, not if, sorry. Uh, for each ID running from 1 to 10, so from the first stock to the last stock we want to invest in our portfolio, uh, we want to check if, uh, if actually this trainer measure which is in here is bigger than the infinity so we want to check if this stock actually has a buying signal or not and we're going to do it like this minus infinity. then we would like to include it to our portfolio and this is our final portfolio, which is a time kind of display function. Yeah, it will not display the function. Uh, we like and ID is going to be equal to uh, in, oh. Okay, and this is sorting by trainer measures. So, um, what what I did here is is that I'm saying that please check all the ten stocks potential stocks we're going to invest in, and uh, check if they have a buying signal. And they will have a bind signal, uh, signal only if they will have a trainer measure. If they don't have a trainer measure, they will have minus infinity. So even if they have a trainer measure, let's say minus 10 million, it still will be bigger than minus infinity. So this is why we're writing it in this manner. And then here I'm saying that at the specific point of time, a stock, let's say for example number one, here is going to be equal to the index over here if it has a buying signal and I'm running it for the 10 stocks and that's it so this is all for the sorting and for the trainer measure so today we did this two things we also sort it and we applying it by the big loop uh, so that we have the portfolio for each point of time and today we have crossed out the logical uh, block number four thank you for watching and press here to play next and final video in the coding in MATLAB course uh, good luck and have a nice day. Bye.